geology in a jiffy. What's in the bag? It's... The allotropes of carbon. Allotropes are different structural forms of the same element, but with different properties. Allotropes have two or more different forms, resulting from the different ways atoms bond to each other, which can cause elements to transform from one allotrope to another in response to changes in temperature, pressure or light. So giving allotropes different physical and chemical properties, such as their hardness, melting points, boiling points and reactivities. Carbon has three main allotropes, of diamond, graphite and fullerenes. Carbon is the sixth element in the periodic table, the fourth in the second period of eight, so meaning it has four gaps in its outer shell, meaning it needs to bond four times to be stable. Diamond has a cubic 3D structure, which, if we look at some of its interior carbon atoms, we see that it has a very strong 3D network of strong carbon-carbon covalent bonds. Every atom bonded four times, so meaning there are no weak intermolecular forces, which gives diamond a very hard and very strong structure and a very high great thermal stability with a very high melting point of 4027 degrees C. Wow! When we test the electrical conductivity of diamond, it is very poor as there are no delocalized electrons. All these properties make diamond very useful as the hard edges of cutting tools and also as beautiful jewelry. Graphite has a very strong 2D layered network of carbon-carbon covalent bonds, which we see as only three strong bonds leaving an area of weak electrostatic intermolecular forces between the layers of atoms. This structure gives graphite a very high melting point of 3600 degrees C. But when forces applied along the planes, we see they slide over each other, making the structure slippery, so making graphite ideal to use as a thermally stable lubricant. It also makes graphite quite brittle due to this structure. When we test the electrical conductivity of graphite, we find it's quite a good conductor as the delocalized electrons are free to move and so make an electrical current. These properties make graphite an excellent tool for drawing, for example in pencils, and also useful in batteries and as electrodes in the process of electrolysis. If we take the 3D layered structure of graphite, but make only one layer into a very wide sheet, we make a molecule called graphene, which can be bent to make 3D shapes called fullerenes, molecules made of carbon atoms that have hollow 3D shapes. The structure of fullerenes is often based on hexagonal rings of six carbon atoms, but fullerenes may also contain rings with five or seven carbon atoms in them. The first fullerene discovered was the C60 molecule, named Buckminster fullerene, a hollow, spherical-shaped structure nicknamed the buckyball, its surface made up of 20 hexagons and 12 pentagons. Other fullerenes are elongated to give the shape of a rugby ball, such as this C70 molecule or this C540 molecule. Fullerenes dissolve in organic solvents giving coloured solutions, such as a deep red in petrol hydrocarbon solvents. Fullerenes make excellent lubricants, and their large surface areas also make them useful as catalysts in industry, speeding up chemical reactions. Fullerene molecules may also be used for drug delivery into the body, as they can cage other molecules, such as medicinal drugs. Ultimately, fullerenes can be very elongated. So elongated they form what are known as nanotubes, very long but very thin cylindrical nanomolecules. Nanotubes are strong when stretched and very good conductors of electricity and heat. Nanotubes have many uses, such as for reinforcing composite materials used in sports equipment like tennis rackets or safety materials in bicycles, cars and crash helmets. For allotropes of carbon, all with their different physical and chemical properties from one another, such as their appearance, melting and boiling points, hardness values and reactivities. Please subscribe to my channel. Bye!